Welcome back to 33 year old Boomer ranting in the enchanted forest. If you want to get better at programming, you need frustration tolerance. Let's talk about it. Have you ever been stuck on a problem and you have this, you get this strange feeling in your head of, oh, this is annoying, this is frustrating. I'm stuck, what do I do? Well, in the past, let's say in the 1950s, your only solution was to search manually through a hundred books until you found the thing that would help you. Or you would go to an expert who would teach you and show you the way. Now, whilst this was frustrating, that was just reality. That's just how it worked. You just had to put in the work. There was no alternative. You had to be frustrated. And this was your entire life. Information was difficult to acquire. The skill was having the connections to gain access to the knowledge. Now things are a little bit different. Now you can go to Chat Jeopardy and you can ask it a question. And if the question is basic enough and it's been documented over and over, you're going to find a solution to it. And the frustration will evaporate, which is good, right? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. no, it's not. And I've been there, I get it. When you have this oracle that you can ask questions to, you'll be very, very tempted to always ask your questions. And the problem is that if you do that, you never learn anything. If you drive everywhere, you will never develop the musculature required to walk. Right now I'm in a forest. The earth is very uneven, it's a bit muddy. This forces me to use muscles that most people never use. Because most people walk on flat surfaces, flat, hard, flat surfaces. They have shoes with arch support. And because those muscles are supported and they're never used, they're weak. I don't have that arch support. I just, I just walk in the forest, bro. That's all I do. I just walk in the forest and I build the muscles, even though driving would be easier. The same thing applies to programming. If you, like, the hardest part about the programming isn't knowing the syntax. It's developing the kind of brain that can solve problems which is why AI isn't that big of a threat. Because they, like, programmers have been copying code from Stack Overflow for years. That's not really the, the, the problem. The hard part with programming is knowing what to program, understanding the infrastructure, understanding the logic behind the project. So for example, when I made that video about the project that almost got me hired at 37 Signals. It's a 40 minute video in which I go through the logic of how everything works. I used ChatGPT as a way to search syntax. So I was learning Ruby in the process of making this project. And so I Googled stuff and I also asked ChatGPT stuff. Hey, like, hey, how do I how do I read a file in Ruby? Oh, okay, that's the code, interesting. And then I would manually type it out. That's a really good way to memorize syntax, by the way, just typing it out manually. After doing that, over and over, I learned Ruby and I built a project. The hard part wasn't the syntax. The syntax is pretty straightforward. I mean, Ruby is basically just pseudocode anyway. <clears throat> the hard part was staring at a wall 
and figuring out how I want to solve this problem. I remember being in Finland like two years ago and thinking, okay, how do I make this compression algorithm? How is it going to work? What is the most optimal way to manipulate data in order to get the best possible compression ratio? And this was without knowing anything about compression on purpose. I didn't want to look it up because I wanted the challenge of, like, if compression didn't exist, how would I invent it? How would I make it? Which is where the real fun is anyway. The real fun is in making the kernel. It's in writing the drivers. It's in creating the logic. Like, it's, it's at least for me, the more low-level stuff is the most fun. High level st stuff is fun as well. However, the issue with higher level stuff is that it always changes. What the APIs look like changes. All the abstraction tends to change. It's the low level stuff that at least for me always stays interesting. It's why I'm studying assembly because it's fun. It's, it's not about trying to get the highest paying job as soon as possible. It's about learning how this stuff works. Isn't that gorgeous, by the way? It's pretty cool, pretty cool forest. Pretty cool enchanted Romanian forest. Look, if you want to get better, and I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a master of programming, however, if you want to get better, like if you look at my project, Ruka, on my GitHub, link down below. If you, if you look at it, if you read through the documentation, and most people will not do this. Most people will just go, oh yeah, okay, sure. If you want to get good, have a look at the project. Go read the documentation. If you read it and you still don't understand how it works, this is a fantastic opportunity. Use that frustration that you feel in these moments to get better. Read through the docs over and over. Try and understand the logic. Okay, what did this autistic Romanian man have in his head when he wrote this? Why does the compression algorithm work like this? And once you understand it, think, can I improve it? Ah, uh, yes. Of course you can. That's how you get better. You don't get better by running, by running to mommy. Oh, Chajipani, please give me all the answers. That's not how you get better. You get better by suffering. And I made a video about this yesterday, actually, about how suffering is how you grow. Doing things that you don't feel like is the best way to get better. I know how much that frustration sucks. It really does. And it's, it's so much more tempting when you have the answer available to you immediately. I think in some ways, you know, the people who were born back in the 40s and the 50s, people like Thompson, like Richie, uh, the people who kind of created the a lot of the fundamentals the people who worked on Linux, the people who built some of the first machines. That really cool Palo Alto computer with the vertical screen. That was pretty big brain. Those people had, had it much better in some ways because they were on the wild west of computing. They were the avant-garde. They were at the edges of what was possible. And that their decisions, the things that they made, their design choices, influenced computing forever. Decisions that some artists at, Zero pa uh, at uh, Xerox Park made will forever echo in time. And they had it easier because they had it harder. They didn't have the solutions. If, you, if you're inventing something, you don't have the solutions. You can't go ask the oracle it doesn't know 
because the thing hasn't been documented yet. And I think that's where the real learning is. Now you might say, oh, but Christian, I, I, can't, I can't reinvent computing. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, my sweet, sweet summer child. Yes, you can. When I made my compression algorithm, it, it, I, I was aware that compression already existed. In fact, I even compared my algorithm to 7-zip and to zip and to a bunch of other compression algorithms. Like, the point wasn't that I was trying to invent something new. The point was that I was trying to reinvent something specifically for the learning purpose. When I made the algorithm, I knew that it probably wouldn't be as good as zip or 7-zip because those have been iterated upon for years. And hilariously, in, in some instances with shorter text, my compression algorithm was actually better. But that's a different story. The point was that I wanted to put myself in the shoes of those people. I wanted to feel what it was like to be at Xerox Park. What it was like to figure stuff out from scratch. I wanted to know what it was like to work on ARPANET. What it was like for people to go, huh, how do we get computers to talk to each other? What is the, what mechanism should we use? Should we have some sort of handshake that computers use? I don't know, right? They had to literally figure it out from scratch. The point was that I wanted to learn. I wanted to experience how that felt because that's where the real learning happens. You can learn frameworks, you can memorize syntax, you can understand how someone put together React. However, that is primarily, just memor that is primarily memorization. You are learning about some concept that someone else came up with. And the real learning is going deeper than that. Being frustrated. Knowing that you are one Google away, one Google search away, one, one, uh, one question away to the AI from figuring out how to build this. But that's not the point. That's not fun. The frustration is where the fun comes from. And if you don't know, if you don't agree with me, Here's the thing, you're probably a gamer. If you watch this, you probably probably played a few video games. Have you ever had this experience where you've been playing Skyrim for hours and hours, leveling up? It's fun the entire way. And then eventually you get the very bright idea of, of using a cheat code. Oh baby, it's really fun for like 10 seconds because you now get the sword that you've always wanted. But what happens is you no longer care about the sword because the sword has no value now. It has been conquered, it has been obtained in the most heinous of ways by cheating. The real fun was hunting the goblins and the in the cave. That's where the fun was. It was in the pain. It was in the, it was in the doing stuff. That's what made the sword worth it to begin with. It was never the sword itself. And the same thing applies to learning. If you want to learn, if you want to get big brained, you have to be willing to suffer a little bit because that's how you because, how, because that's how the learning happens. It's in those moments of frustration when you're, you're, you're punching your keyboard, you're, you're very, very, very mad. You're, very, you're a very unhappy boy or a very unhappy girl. That's when the learning happens. This is where the growth happens when you're doing a long walk and you think I'm only like 40% through it 
that's where the growth happens because you push through do not deprive yourself of the opportunity to actually learn don't do that don't be a silly belly don't be a silly boy instead cherish the frustration cherish the suffering because that's how you grow if you can't read if you i mean you can you can you're literate you can read it's just if you pick up a book and you just can't make it through it the pages are too heavy you want to go to sleep that you are in the golden zone right there that is where the growth happens because once you get past that once you spend 10 15 minutes in the in that frustration zone it gets easier especially if you do it repeatedly every day you must train to read in the same way that you train your muscles your big your big big muscles that you definitely have right you must train it and when you do you will become better and better at it which is why you should check out my book <laughs> my novel <laughs> it's almost out it's going to be out in early january if you want to get a, a free copy like an advanced reader copy uh, there's a link down below go there you can download it and i'll email you a person it's not going to be like a newsletter i'll personally manually email you to remind you hey the book is out if you want to leave a review you're free to do so but you don't have to use this book use it to train your big brain and i'm i'm being a little bit tongue-in-cheek because it's my book whatever i'm promoting it but pick a book any book and spend 10 15 minutes a day forcing yourself to read because that's how you will gain the stamina to read for documentation when you're coding when you don't really feel like it when you'd rather just google it or ask the oracle that's how you develop that stamina that's how you get better you have to have if you want to be in the top one percent of your pursuit whatever that may be you have to have the stamina to do the actual training where well, you want to become a, a really smart dev but you can't read some documentation do you think that's how you're going to get there develop your stamina read read a few pages a day it doesn't have to be my book it can be any book it doesn't matter if you're not a big fan of science fiction don't get my book get some other book read 10 pages a day suffer grit your teeth and suffer through it and it will get a lot easier and then one day after a lot of suffering you'll open the documentation to your to react to your favorite framework or whatever and you'll go oh this isn't that bad at all i can actually understand this i can actually bear to read this for more than five minutes and that is when you'll have a fighting chance see you in the next one bye bye